The trailer for Battle Angel was released, and YouTube channels everywhere scramble to make garbage videos explaining what it is. And they are getting tons of crap wrong, like IGN saying, Alita's an android. Nope, she's got a human brain. You see it on page nine of the very first issue. When one of the main themes of the series is exploring what it means to be human, kind of an important detail to get right. Or when IGN also said, She seems to be a new character, though it's possible she's based on Kana from the comics. Kana? Kana who appears for 10 pages in book seven? No, this is obviously Gonzu, and they just changed him from a fat little Japanese guy to a tall black woman. Don't be a dumbass and get that shit wrong. You see, I'm what you might call a hardcore Battle Angel fan, and I made sure to reread the entire series before making this video to make sure I didn't miss a goddamn single Easter egg, so let's get started. The first thing you probably missed in the trailer is when did Christoph Waltz get this weird scar on his forehead? Can you see it? How about now? What about in this shot? Here, I'll use Photoshop to enhance it for you. Ah, now you see, he's got this weird square-shaped scar with a little circle in the middle of it. Here, if I invert the image, it might be easier for you to see. And even more subtle is this larger square scar around it. Now, if you're a hardcore fan like I am, you were probably a little confused about Christoph Waltz's character when you saw the trailer, but now this has answered that for you. The next thing we're going to look at is Mr. Vector here. We only get a quick shot of him, but there are some Easter eggs in these reflections, whether they meant to put them in there or not. First off, check this reflection out in the car window. This is definitely a person. See the little outline of the fingers there? Yeah, you see the fingers. And now that I pointed it out, you can probably tell there's a head and a little jacket collar and a shoulder. Definitely a person. But let's get way more detailed here. You can actually make stuff out in the lens of his glasses. If we zoom way in, you can see a rough outline of a body and a severed head. This might seem like I'm reaching and there's no way this is an actual thing, but for people who have read the series, they know exactly which part of the book this is. Now here's a huge easter egg that a lot of you probably missed. In this shot, her body's black, but before her body was white. She's not wearing gloves, you can tell by the detail on her hands. This is actually a different body. And you can see the shape of Alita's collar has changed too. It's now this rounded shape, whereas it used to be kind of a v-neck. But this is part of a real body, this is actual skin, not robotics. So not only can we see that she gets a new body, but we can tell that there was probably some damage done to her collar area, and that's why the shape changed. The trailer shows an important distinction between it and the manga. In the manga, Alita gets her body kind of piecemeal, bit by bit, and the source of these ornate arms is really important. But you can see here that they come with a full torso. And in this shot, when she's asking Ido if she's supposed to know him, you can see that she has a full body, so it probably all came as one piece. Which makes sense, because they have to save some time somewhere. Here's a cool little easter egg. So she gets into this fight in the Kansas bar, and you can see that the whole place has blue lights. Then when Alita jumps down this hole, you can see blue light on the ceiling behind her. She's also engulfed in blue light in this next shot. So this hole is definitely in the floor of the Kansas bar. How about we get a few things out of the way that look like Easter eggs, but actually mean nothing. For example, the guy in this wanted screen on the table is not any specific character in the books. As for this weapon and the arm, they don't belong to anybody in particular. I went through every person who's ever been in the Kansas bar, and it is not a specific character that they're showing. One interesting person they do show in the Kansas bar though, is Hugo. He's in this bar in the trailer for literally one frame, but he does not set foot in the bar in the manga, so that's going to be an interesting change. Especially because as you see later in the trailer, Zappin is chasing him through the streets. This shot of Alita jumping from building to building also contains zero easter eggs. When it comes to the skyline of the scrapyard, they completely changed the way the buildings look, so it's impossible to pick out any specific buildings that they're showing. In general, they made the scrapyard more vibrant and gave it more of a ghost in the shell look, so it's impossible to pick out any specific stores in this market area or anything like that. Zero easter eggs in this shot. And lastly, this Japanese writing on this door in an alley, all it says is exit, it's not an easter egg. Now let's go back to things that are easter eggs, like these cases in the background behind Alita's shoulder. These look identical to the case that Ido stores his hammer in. And if he's keeping it out in the open while he's talking to Alita, that's an interesting change. By the way, the hammer is cool in the books, but in the movie, holy hell does it look cool. There's a lot going on in this shot, like Ido's hammer being on the ground, and this giant guy in a cloak in the background. There is only one character in the comics who wears a cloak like that, so there is no doubt about who this is. Which means this woman is definitely a reimagining of the guy in the cloak's underling. Which is fine with me, because he does look kinda lame in the comics. 
However, the way Christoph Waltz looks back in this shot, as though Alita's coming to help him out, makes me think that this character is actually a combination of the underling and this unnamed character in the books. They're probably combining these characters in the movie to save time, and it doesn't really change anything important, so I'm cool with it. At this point in the video, I need to warn you there are going to be some extremely mild spoilers. This is going to be stuff that we can tell by looking at the Internet Movie Database page and seeing which characters have been cast and which haven't. It's weird that in these shots there's no baby at the Kansas bar. Baby Koyomi is pretty important and she grows bit by bit from graphic novel to graphic novel. However, they've cast some 20 year old to play her. Koyomi does grow up to do some pretty badass stuff, but not for a long time from when the events of this movie take place. Another thing we can tell from IMDb is that we are definitely getting Motorball. And best of all, the badass himself, Ajakuti. I did have to laugh when I saw that they cast Ajakuti's pit crew, because his pit crew consists of these two guys with no names who exist for one panel and are never seen again in the series. What's weird though is Alita's pit crew isn't cast. No Ed and no Umba, who are really important characters, so I think we're just getting a teaser of Motorball. There's also no Shamira cast, which is weird because she's our introduction to the world of Motorball. And of course, if there's no Shamira, then that means unfortunately there's no Joshua Gun. But like I said, I'm pretty sure what we're getting is a little teaser of Motorball to make people interested in seeing the second movie, and the second movie is going to be the Motorball storyline. There is somebody cast to play Kinuba, which is cool because that means we get a badass fight scene that I thought they'd cut out like they did in the anime. Unfortunately, there is no Dusty Nova cast, which sucks because it means we don't get the full backstory of somebody who's in this movie. One thing I'm disappointed in is that we get Chiren, a character who was only created for the abysmal anime. Ugh. Whatever you do, don't watch that piece of garbage. Another thing they've changed is the disparity in size between characters. These grind cutters are supposed to be big enough for Alita to run along them, both in the anime and in the manga. But here you can see that they are definitely too small for her to do that. And that does it! Now you know every single easter egg in the Battle Angel trailer. And by the way, I'm a professional fight choreographer, so be sure to check back into my channel when the next trailer is released with more fighting footage. I'll be analyzing the martial arts in the movie and comparing it to the fighting styles that are used in the manga.